What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Trill here from Team APS. Shout out to all my Trillions out there. Uh, coming at you guys with a deck profile from uh, went to Pearl Regionals. Um, I went X2. Um, did not get my invite. Uh, sadly to say. Um, it also kind of sucked that um, I didn't put all the cards on my deck list that were supposed to be in there. So I wasn't running everything. Outside of all that, I bricked almost every game. So I was proud to go X2. But I was playing Gokies. So you guys want to see the trash. Let's get into it, all right? I'm going to start off with the Monsters. Uh, of course, triple Goki Super X, you know, standard this year. Uh, Marauding Captain of the Deck. So any, anytime I see two Gokis, I mean, I pretty much, I'm happy. Uh, it probably only happened twice, but whatever. Uh, triple Twist Cobra. Of course, everything, you know, when they go to the graveyard, they search. Twist Cobra is also there just because it, it can boost my Goki's monster attack up, which I needed maybe once or twice yesterday. So, because sometimes the 1800 attack Super X isn't enough, but they won't, they double sum me and I can't go into anything, but I can still beat over stuff. So, that's cool. One with Scorpio because sometimes you just you just need a big normal summon beater. Sometimes you don't have the combo for go for Super X and uh, Twist Cobra. And a lot of times people thought this monster was special summon, so they always try to out it by some kind of way. Like somebody tried to Cerberus yesterday, but it's a normal summon, so it didn't matter. Twenty three hundred attack is pretty good too, so thank you. Uh, two of the best Goki is head back. It's just free advantage. Discard one, special himself to the field by targeting another Goki on the field. A lot of uh, just pretty much linking up in, you know, your bigger plays. And then two octo stretch. It's the one you kind of get off ISO. Also, you can have damage, which never came up, but you know it's possible. Uh, continue on the uh, connector package. I wasn't running this originally, but I, I've always liked it. I love the connector package actually. Um, you know, just trying to see into your opponent's hand. Also, it's two free monsters to start to ISO play. Typically, you want to start off with two Gokis. That's the best. Uh, I know, the best start ever. But um, in times you can't, just two free months is always going to be the best thing. This card here just saved my life a lot of times when I knew I wanted to push for like Appaloosa and stuff. But I look in the hand and see they had Kaiju because everybody was running Kaijus yesterday. This card let me know, hey, let's not waste any of my good monsters. Let's try to put something else out there. So thank you, Aqua Dolphin. I think I only resolved like twice. Uh, as far as the extenders, uh, two Junk Forge, two Rare Layers, another big beater. If you just put them to feel like a Cyber Dragon. And two uh, of your butter spots, pretty much they just kind of do a lot of uh, chain blocking for you. Um, I didn't get hit with maybe two ashes the entire day, and one of them he tried, but he couldn't because butter spot just says no, which is lovely. <clears throat> I ran hand traps. I typically don't like to run a lot of hand traps, but I wasn't sure where I wanted to go, what direction I wanted to go in with the deck, so I ran a few that I thought were necessary for the format since you know, it's changed. Uh, two ash, <clears throat> two droll, which were awesome two dd crow which is probably the best hand trap in the uh deck for me and then uh two ogre which were probably the worst card period in the deck for me uh, if i ever drew them they were unnecessary and sometimes if i feel like, feel like i need them i did not draw them but you know that's that we're taking it out it should have been ghost bell and, you know in hindsight just ghost bell just seemed like a much better uh, hand trap for this format <clears throat> the last two monsters for me are uh jump anchor and Cyber Sign, this is very weird. It caught my opponent off. I drew both of these maids most most throughout the day. Uh, at least five, I think five rounds. I drew both of these at some point. Um, no, actually, yeah, almost every round actually. About, about, yeah, about five, yeah, about five rounds. I drew, I drew, drew them all at least once. Sometimes I drew them together, which was worse. And a lot of times I draw them with no combo. So a lot of times I would just hard summon this and just use effect and bring out something like. <laughs> what else can you do? Um, this is for a combo that I'll tell you guys about a little bit later. Some of you guys might already know it. Me and a few guys are online were kind of discussing it. Kind of, it's kind of cool, kind of niche, kind of, kind of me. So I had to play it, and uh, this is the combo that brings out this. So you'll see that. Uh, that's it for the monsters. Shouldn't be, in, but it is. On to the spells. One rota. Obviously, we're playing warrior deck. Uh, two instant fusion for the raging, because you know we need extenders. Double Goki rematch. Sometimes I wish I had played three. It seems like, it seems like you don't want to play three because it's a clog, but three is definitely necessary the way this format goes. There's a lot of back and forth uh, with a lot of these decks. You know, so if they don't completely shut you out, then you, you need to follow up play. Two call by the grave, which was highly unnecessary. Everybody's playing hand traps, but they're playing like droll and stuff. And by the time they drove me, I've already searched the cards I need, so I really don't care. Um, no, no, this is not necessary. And then, then on to the equips was the uh, one Phoenix Blade. Warriors is awesome. Living Fossil because it's a free extender. And the last but not least was Double Edged Sword. Um, basically, I didn't have a third equipped to put into the deck. And I didn't know what else I wanted to run. I didn't want to go look for anything. You know, this just came out of the new set. And it gives uh, it gives the equipped monster 2,000 attack. And any damage your opponent takes from the uh, from a battle with it, you take as well. At any time, you take more than 2,000 damage by this effect, it gets into the graveyard. But basically, I used it to keep my small monsters out in the field. And also, I equipped it to a Napaloosa, made it 4,400 attack. And... Gave it extra, gave it extra negate. So this card is really awesome. It's probably the best, the best spell in my deck. Also, because I drew it more than I actually sent it to the graveyard. So there's that. 
Uh, lastly, for the traps, it was just three impermanence. I wanted to play Shade Brigadine, but I just couldn't because I prefer to have this because a lot of times you're going to lose the die roll. Playing against things like spirals and stuff, you need some kind of interaction. So this was much better than Shade Brigadine. And actually, this was, I don't say it was MVP, but every time I drew it, it was perfect. So I'm glad that I did run this over Brigadine. Um, that's actually it for the main deck. It's 44 cards. It should have been a couple more. Um, forgot a few of them, but you know, actually I was going to run things like Double Summon and a few other cards, but we didn't quite get there. On to the side deck, actually. It's very standard, we'll call it, but uh, like I said, I just want to try to hit, just hit everything. Just kind of be, I want it to be standard because the format's kind of changed and everybody's playing pretty much everything, so just want to be kind of as broad as possible. So Triple Nibiru, I only used it once against a Mech Knight player. It got me game, but there's no other matchup where I really needed it, so it was the only time it got soldered in. Double Mind Control, I think anytime you have to go up second, Mind Control is probably one of the best side cards in the game, hands down. Um, wish I would have played three, but I didn't have space. Uh, actually, I didn't even bring my third one with me, so there was that too, but Mind Control is awesome. Uh, triple Twin Twister and Triple Cosmic Cyclone, uh, necessary for back row decks. Actually, one of my losses was to Paleo Frogs, and I wish I had these mained, because the game one, he just sets five. And I was like, what, what do you do against that? And he just had everything. So I wish I had made some kind of like uh, spell and trap hate. Um, it's really necessary going to the format because the format hasn't been defined yet. Everybody says there's a spiral format and spirals is great, but there are other decks out there that know you're looking for spirals. So they play other things that are kind of counter to that. So should have made some of these, but regardless, when I did have them, they were, they were perfect. Uh, <laughs> the one Regeki, I don't have Lightning Storm yet, sad face. So I had to have something else to kind of just get around big monsters. And I thought about that, like, they're not getting my monster fixed, but they got to stop this Regeki too. And Thunder isn't really a thing, so I'm not worried about you guys trying to protect yourself. And then last but not least, evenly match. I've never been a big fan of this card, but going into a format of big boards and back row, this card was very necessary. And every time I drew it, actually, it saved my life. So that's it for the side. And then on to the extra, which is probably the spiciest thing of the deck. And had the reason why I even won half the game, I won. So thank you guys. The one Rajin, because, you know, Instant Fusion is a free card. I actually played against a hero player, and I... Um, I impermanence his plasma because he went first. He had plasma, sun riser, absolute zero, and something else. I uh, impermanence his uh, plasma, instant fusion this, book of moon is sun riser, and just went off from there. So I saved my life. Double ISO because uh, every now and then you do get the chance to resolve two, and I actually did it. Uh, I did it like maybe two or three times to say, and it actually got me a good game. I only played three equips, but as long as I don't draw them, then both of these ISOs are live. Plus, it's always a free search. You can never hate, hate, hate on the free search, so we'll go with that. Um, the nightmare package. Just because of a random background and stuff like that. So we got the Phoenix, the Cerberus, and the Unicorn. Now everybody knows that like, Unicorn is one of my favorite monsters. Probably my, my favorite of all the Nightmares. Uh, that and then Griffin's next. But you got to play the package. These cards are amazing. Thank you. Uh, Goki Jet Ogre. This card was probably the second MVP in the, in the, uh, in the deck. Just because it gave me a, a, another link to, to go into. Besides having to waste one of my Nightmares. Because that's the issue you run is that you, you put the two Gokis on the field. And you're like, what are you going to next? And you, you don't want to waste these because you know you're gonna need them later on in the matchup, and you don't run more than one. But uh, this card that the best one to just go into, it had a perfect link arrow that pointed off to the side or down, so it was never in a bad position. So it was really great. And you also see why I run it as well. But I love this card. Um, of course, the Apollosa got to play it. The Boar Sword, which I never summoned because you're so worried about like so many hand traps and like Nibiru and stuff that you just you just don't go into it. So I, it, I never summoned that. Even when I felt like I had game on board. I never put it out there. Like it just there was no reason to. Um, then we have Goki the Giant Ogre, and anybody who knows me that knows that I play Cubic. He's pretty much a big uh, another uh, a big Cubic Lord. Basically, he's unaffected by monsters whose attack is equal to or less than his. And at any time he's targeted, or anything he points to is targeted, you can like you can you can decrease his attack and negate that. And he can also gain attack uh, until the end of the turn. So like he just he just doesn't die. He's pretty much out there for me to get around spiral and stuff. Like every time I brought him out though, either I won the game, like either they they scooped or they couldn't out it, or or they had a kaiju for that because kaijus are a thing. So there was a time when I, when I dolphined my that my opponent and I realized he had kaijus and I wanted to go into a link four. I didn't want to waste the uh, Appaloosa, so I just went to him instead. And they kaijued it, of course. But I knew that was going to happen. But he, he he did exactly what he wanted to do. And the reason, that's another reason why I run the uh, the Jet Ogres because he requires only Goki monsters. So I use two Gokis to go into him and then I make that I can rematch it back into the other two that I use and go into the Giant Ogres. Um, Moving forward, and we get into all the crazy stuff now. <clears throat> the run one road warrior, which is the reason why we run the uh, junk anchor. I can get this off of the ISO, and then I can rematch into I can either re I can pretty much either rematch or head back into enough levels to make level eight. So this would become that because you need a synchron monster to make, it. and it takes at least three, which is the worst part of all. But 
If it, if it was just two, it'd be so much better. It takes three, so you got to do it. But this card is just spicy. You see, people see it, and they're like, I don't know what you're about to do. I'm like, cool, because I don't either. But we're going to do it anyway. And so I bring that out. And um, pretty much I I use this whenever this is the field. It's special summon Cyber Sign because that's just special summon level 2 uh, Warrior or Machine from your deck. So it's special summon Cyber Sign. And then you're going to use Cyber Sign to either bring out the last word from another planet or Naturio Exterior. Just kind of like <laughs> depend on your match or what you go into. The last word from another planet, whenever it's summoned, it destroys all monsters you control. And while it's on the field, neither player can summon. That's summon period, including flip summon. So it's really good. Then, of course, Naturio Exterior. Whenever your opponent would activate a spell or trap, you can uh, banish one from grave and mill from the top of the deck to the graveyard to negate and destroy that. It's not a hard once per turn. It just, it's not a once per chain. It's just old and good and hard to bring out. So thank you, Cyberstein. Um, I played my Paleo player, um, and he actually, game one, I'm not he game, he thrashed, he said five. Game two, I hard drew Cyberstein. My hand was bad. I literally just summoned Cyberstein, paid the 5,000, summoned this, and he ended up scooping because he couldn't out it. So it worked out. Game three, of course, he went back to his five back row. And uh, you know, shout out to him. He got third place. He kicked, he kicked my butt. This right here was amazing because uh, the, my, one of my opponents was playing so many Kaijus. And I just like I just hard drew Cyber Sound again, paid the damage, and <laughs> put him on field. And he couldn't summon anything. So we were just pretty much. And then he missed Mommy. So it literally was just a back and forth. It was the most, I don't want to say cancerous, but it was not a fun time to, just <laughs> to sit there. But he couldn't get any advantage, and neither could I. But it, I was fine because he couldn't summon any of his monsters, which he really, really needed to do. And the thing that. Um, that made this guy so awesome is that I would actually go into Borgard Dragon first because Borgard Dragon can't be destroyed by card effects so I'd summon Borgard Dragon and then I'd summon this and this would go to blow up all my monsters but he can't die so I'd have these two on board my opponent can't summon and I would just sit there and just kind of a lock um, and just moves out the way this card was MVP in the, of, the, of the entire day for me just because it couldn't be destroyed by battle I played against my hero player he, tried, he had absolute zero in the field absolute zero can't out it also, he had he went to Malicious Bane, and Bane blows up your monsters, but he doesn't die. And also, Bane couldn't attack over me because I just put Bane in defense. So he just literally couldn't get over it. And, I, and at that point, I just started killing his monsters. And his other effect that people forget about, besides putting things in defense, because that's what a lot of the Boros do, is he can send a spell trap from my side of the field to the graveyard to reborn a monster that was destroyed by that, you know, during that turn. Even player's his monster that was destroyed that turn. So I kill one of his monsters, send the Phoenix Blade to the uh, graveyard, Spend some of his monsters on my side of the field. Get Phoenix Blade back. Go into my Nightmare players or whatever the case may be. This is the reason why I won about 80% of my games. And I know it's a bad card to a lot of people, but it's a good card to me. Go you. Uh, that's really it for the deck profile, you guys. Um, any changes I would make first, I'd run the cards I was going to run. I was running double summon because like I said, I want to run two Gokis. And sometimes I have, I'd have a handful of Gokis but no Super X. I wanted to run double summon. And I thought, I borrowed some from Paul and Alec. And I thought that I had them. I mean, almost I gave them back to Paul. Realized I didn't. Also, I was supposed to be running um, IP Masquerina in my extra deck. Forgot to write it on the list as well. And there was something else I forgot to put on my list. I can't remember what it is now, but whatever it was, I was missing like four cards on my deck list. And once you in, you know turn in your deck list, you can't you can't make any revisions to it. So there was that. But I did finish X2. Did not get my my top from that. I already have my invite, thankfully. But it was a fun event. It was probably one. Of the, I think these last few events I've been to have been extremely fun. And this was a uh, this was a good time for me. I want to make changes to this deck, but I don't know if everybody knows. Each event I go to, I have to play a different deck currently. So we'll come back to this some other time. Anyway, it's your boy Trail from Team APS. Peace.